Hello, my name is Ian Berry, and I'm going to be sharing with you in this presentation my preliminary findings within a ninth grade world geography classroom at Buffalo Gap High School, located in Swope, Virginia. In regards to Mr. Torrens' culturally relevant practices, it is my understanding that the only way that he incorporates these methods with his students was referencing pop culture, such as video games and cartoons, um, and he did this throughout his lectures. I am led to believe that Mr. Torrens sees his classroom as a body that needs to digest facts and information solely for the purpose of passing the standards of learning test in world geography. The student body of the classroom that I observed was a total of 15 students, 13 students being white, one Hispanic student, and two black students. Of those 15 students, one third of them have either a 504 or IEP plan in place. So for reference, the Virginia Legal Aid Society describes a 504 plan as a plan that allows children with special needs who don't want or qualify for special education services. With that being said, Mr. Torrens at times struggled with his student body in order to help uh, keep them focused, out of trouble, or simply on task. I would say that the student-teacher relationship in Mr. Torrens' class falls under a traditional hierarchy type scenario where students are considered empty vessels and the teacher is there to fill those so-called empty vessels with knowledge. Students are expected to be quiet and pay close attention to the teacher's verbal lecture and the videos that pertain to class topics. The SPED teachers who are in the classroom don't seem to make a huge difference these teachers occasionally walk over to the students and make sure they are making progress on their assignments. But other than that, conversations are brief and no attempt of relationship building is seen during their interactions. The students don't seem to respect Mr. Stor Mr. Torrens, but know that they must listen to him and his wishes in order to stay out of trouble. Effective use of technology in the classroom is one of Mr. Torrens' strengths. He's able to provide a wealth of information to his students by using materials found online. Videos and pictures provide him with the ability to share visuals with his students. I find that most of the videos are geared towards young adults and have a rather unbiased view. The materials he shares are a necessity since each one reinforces a worldly perspective geared toward possible SOL topics. When possible, Mr. Torrens uses educational video games found on the internet, which allow the students to be interactive with the course materials. The use of video games provides the students with something that is a little out of the ordinary, which I think they appreciate. Each student uses their very own Chromebook to help them follow along with the teacher-led lecture. Their device allows them to access the student portal, which is called Canvas, for each of their classes. I was excited when Augusta County Public Schools adopted this portal countywide because it is used in so many other schools, colleges, and universities um, so that students decide, if students decide to continue their academic career post high school, they will already be familiar with the student portal uh, of Canvas and its capabilities. Throughout my observation, I noticed that class time is separated into four parts. The first part is a warm-up exercise. This exercise is usually based on either an actively learn, uh, where students read and answer questions on a news article. The other warm-up exercise is exploring maps and macroeconomic data. Students are usually given five to 10 minutes to complete this warm-up before the teacher moves on to the next part of the class. During the second part of the class, Mr. Torrens briefly explains the objectives for the day. He often recites the topics that the class will be exploring, unit objectives, and important quiz and test taking dates. Oftentimes, he will reinforce and mention classroom behavior, expectations, and policies. The third part of the class is, le the third part of the class is lecture based. The teacher's lectures usually last anywhere from 60 to 70 minutes. The lecture is broken up between oral lecture and PowerPoint presentation. Videos are viewed about every five to 10 minutes in order for the teacher and students to have a break. The videos range anywhere from two and a half to five minutes. Uh, oftentimes, Mr. Torrens will talk over the video in order to um, highlight certain key topics that he wants to cover. The fourth part of the class is individual study time. This time is meant for students to work on their packets, missing work, or study for an upcoming quiz or test. And this is the conclusion of my presentation. Thank you for listening.